Good morning, I'm Kara Rucker. The time is now 8 o'clock on this Monday. Iran's hijab law is now under review by its government. But first, the FBI is involved in a suspicious power outage in North Carolina. This is your morning update. Tens of thousands of residents in one North Carolina county are without power after a series of intentional and targeted attacks on power facilities, according to officials. Deemed an act of violence, gunshots were fired at substations, causing the blackout, turning the mass power outage into a criminal investigation. Schools are closed this morning, shelters are open, a curfew in place as officials investigate for a motive. Folks, we're living in some challenging times challenging times that I never thought in my 40 years in law enforcement we would be seeing things and dealing with folks that are dealing with things that we're dealing with. Oil from Russia now has a price cap of $60 a barrel after a European Union vote on Friday. The EU, along with the G7 nations, trying to limit and lower the revenue Russia makes off of its crude oil. The U.S. expressing support for the price cap. It, it was never about not having any Russian oil on the market. Uh, it, it was about uh, balancing supply and demand, but also balancing the need to limit uh, Mr. Putin's ability to profit. And again, we think that $60 per barrel will do that. Um, uh, we're supportive of that. But Russia says they're not going to sell their oil that cheap, saying they are sticking to the market price and threaten to end exports completely to countries trying to cap how much Russia can sell its oil for. Months of protest in Iran could be forcing slight movement from its government. Iran's hijab law is reportedly under review as officials meet to discuss its strict enforcement of Islamic law. They say results from their discussions will come within the next week or two. There are conflicting reports over whether the Iranian government already dismantled its morality police force, which enforces its dress code. The attorney general there reportedly said it had been shut down, but other officials say those remarks have been misinterpreted. North Korea has fired 130 rounds of artillery directed toward the sea border between North and South Korea. Some of the shellings landed in the buffer space between the two nations, which is in violation to their 2018 agreement meant to reduce tensions. The North says these are shots after detecting the United States and the South are performing more military drills, which are expected to continue into Tuesday. Over the weekend, Secretary of State Antony Blinken offered an update on negotiation talks with Russia on the release of Brittany Griner and Paul Whelan. The proof will be in the pudding. We have to see if uh, the engagements that we've had, the discussions that we have, produce an actual result. The other side gets a vote in this. It's not just uh, what we want, it's what uh, they're prepared to do. Uh, and this is something that we're working on almost every day. An original offer from the U.S. was put on the table in July, but a lot has changed since then. Greiner has been convicted in Russian court, her appeal denied, and last month she was sent to a penal colony, serving out her nine-year sentence of hard labor. Happening later today, the Supreme Court will take up a case that pins religious freedom against gay rights. A Christian graphic artist refuses to design wedding websites for gay couples. The designer says a ruling against her would force artists of all kinds to do work against their faith. While the other side argues if the designer wins the case, it opens the door for a wide range of businesses to discriminate. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. We'll continue to follow the latest headlines for you at noon. Until then, from the heart of the nation, I'm Kara Rucker. Have a great day.